Hello and welcome to your region this week. I'm Anandi Carol Woolery. The Kitchener Rangers are holding their annual teddy bear toss game this Tuesday. Here's Dan Polishchuk with the details. Down here, I've got a special interview with my friend Dan Polischuk from the Rangers. And can I even tell you how thrilled I am to have Steve Gibson work in this camera right now? Dan, I have to ask you about a few things to go on with the Kitchener Rangers right now. I just saw on the scoreboard pregame an amazing Christmas offer coming up. Can you tell our fans a bit about that? Absolutely. Great stocking stuff we have going on right now up until December the 20th. Uh, four tickets for $43, and it includes a $10 gift voucher to Rangers Authentic. So you can suit up with your Rangers gear and check out a game. It's applicable for the game on the 29th of December and three more in January. First game back from Christmas. That's a great thing, as you said, a great stocking stuff. And now, Dan, the Rangers always have these milestone games on the calendar. We've got the Remembrance Day game, but probably the one that most people circle is the Teddy Bear Toss game. It's coming up. Give us some details. Absolutely. It's a big one, even bigger than it has been in previous years. The 25th anniversary, if you can believe it, of the annual Teddy Bear Toss game. So we're hoping that everyone comes out, fills the yacht here. We have some tickets still available for that one coming up on December the 10th. It's a Tuesday night game against the London Knights. So not only do you get to see a great rival, hopefully we shower them with some teddy bears uh, this year. And for those that might not be familiar with it, let's talk a bit about what the Teddy Bear Tusk does for our community. Where does it go? How many bears do we see come in? And, and, and what partners or what charities do we partner with? Well, just over uh, over 24, 24 years now, just under 154,000 total bears have been collected, which charities from across the region are are able to come and collect them and distribute to those children in need and who would be looking for a Christmas gift that might not otherwise be able to get one this holiday season. So definitely uh, something that the community has rallied around uh, over the last number of years too. And Canadian Tire, Jumpstart Foundation, monetary donations goes to support this national initiative which help kids participate in organized sports that financially might not be able to do so. One of the things I do know that's that's evolved over the years, the teddy bear toss, is while it is fun to just throw your bear on the ice, you do have to put them in a clear plastic bag now. Some of those are available here or you can bring from home, correct? Exactly right. Make sure they're clean. Uh, no battery pack kind of teddy bears, just nice and simple. You can get as large as you'd like or as creative as you'd like in terms of the stuffed animal, but yes, make sure they're in a clear plastic bag so they're ready to go when they hit the ice. All right, Tuesday, December the 10th against the London Knights. Dan, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you prediction. I have already picked Reed Vallad to score the teddy bear goal. Who do you think will score the teddy bear goal this year? Well, first of all, I'm impressed. You've picked him almost a month out, I think, too. But I'm going to go with another veteran, Riley Damiani. I think he's going to pot it here. Uh, we had Adam Asker and another veteran get the uh, game high total from a couple years ago with just shy of 11,000. So I think number 13 is going to do it. All right, fans, get those numbers, get those teddy bears. Let's set a record this year when Reed Vallad scores the teddy bear <laughs> toss goal. Dan, thanks for taking time with us. Thanks for always having me. The Global Migration Film Festival is underway in the region. The festival features many films all focused around migrants in celebration of International Migrants Day on December 18th. We spoke with the region about the festival. So the Global Migration Film Festival is an initiative of the United Nations Migration Agency, the International Organization for Migration. They launched it four years ago um, as a way to bring films uh, to the world that kind of focus on migration and show both the challenges of migration in the world today and the promise that migration brings to communities that are impacted by it. Um, we joined on to this festival. We're in our third year now. We're one of their local implementing partners, uh, the first implementing partner here in Canada. I'm very happy to bring the festival here to Waterloo Region. This year we are showing nine films. We have um, eight different days of screenings. One of the days will include two films, um, but yeah, so eight screenings with nine different films. So the festival runs here in Waterloo Region from the 5th of December through the 18th of December. The film festival was launched as a way to celebrate the International Migrants Day, which is one of the um, international observance days set by the United Nations. Um, so the festival aligns with kind of celebration of that day, which is on December 18th. So it starts before that day and it's kind of a way to lead up to and get people to think about migration and how it um, happens in the world and what that means here in Waterloo Region um, around that day. Immigration is woven into the fabric of Waterloo Region. You know, unless you're Indigenous to Canada, everybody has immigrated at one point or another in their family history. So, you know, we like to think of immigration or Waterloo Region as a community of immigration. And so every opportunity that we have to talk about stories of migration um, in Canada and around the world 
and the, the impact that those have on people who are here, people who are immigrants or those who are not. Um, everybody's life is touched by migration in some way and bringing this festival here to Waterloo Region is a way that we're just able to create space for everybody to just kind of think about that and engage in conversation and um, celebrate, you know, kind of the benefits that migration brings to a community like Waterloo Region. So we have screenings happening in Kitchener, Waterloo and Cambridge um, in a bunch of different places. Some of them uh, art galleries, um, some community centres, um, some out of City Hall in Kitchener. Um, so yeah, lots of different venues around the region. Um, if people are interested in, in coming, um, we have all of the locations and information about the films are available on our website. Um, so people could go there to check it out. That's www.immigrationwaterlooregion ca slash wr mig fest one of the great things about this festival is that it's not just an opportunity to watch a film that you may may not other otherwise come across um, um, this festival is intended to be kind of really open and accessible all of the films are free there's no charge for anybody to attend any of the screenings and every screening is used as an opportunity to have a conversation your region this week we'll be right back after this Welcome back. A recent report from the Auditor General found the province is not using sound evidence in its climate change plan. 570 News' Mike Farwell speaks with Ontario Green Party leader Mike Schreiner about the findings. Mike Schreiner is not just the leader of the Green Party of Ontario, he's also the MPP representing Guelph. He joins us for a chat. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, Mike. How are you this morning? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm good, other than uh, what I read yesterday puts a little fear in me. Well, I, I suspected that it might, and I, I also suspect because you were critical of the Conservatives' climate plan even as it was put forward, so maybe this report doesn't uh, surprise you too much, but what what is it that brings that fear into your heart over this report? Well, what this report did, it confirmed what many of us suspected, is that the Conservatives' climate plan is a made-to-fail plan. But I think the thing that surprised me is just how much magic math the Conservatives are using uh, to even attempt to, um, you know, pull the wool over people's eyes, that they're not even going to come close to meeting what they've already ma made as weakened targets. And so I think it was that exposure that really, you know, hit me. Um, you know, for, it, for example, um, you know, they say they, EVs are going to be a big part of their meeting our pollution reduction targets, and yet they've canceled and sabotaged all the programs to support electric vehicles. Um, they say they're going to rely on innovation, but it's been revealed now it's unproven technology, and they don't even have any plans or programs or tax incentives or anything to incentivize that technology. So, you know, the plan is a complete failure, and I think the minister admitted that yesterday when he sheepishly said, well, you know, it's really not a plan. It's, it's more of a draft plan and a living document, and we're going to start consulting Ontarians on how to move forward. Well, that's just not good enough when we're facing a climate crisis. What would you like to see in a climate plan for Ontario, Mike? Well, Mike, I mean, first of all, I would ask the government to look at the 50-point climate plan that we gave to the previous minister and, you know, gave to the current minister and start taking some good ideas out of it that would not only help address the climate crisis and reduce our climate pollution, but would also help Ontario to be a leader in the fastest growing sector of the global economy, the clean economy, which quite frankly, our region, you know, Guelph, Kitchener, Waterloo, Cambridge region, we're so poised to be leaders in the clean economy and we're already doing great work in terms of clean tech. Let's support those efforts. And I see it in, in three critical ways. So one is put a price on pollution. And so if the government would just, the Ford government would just stop wasting our tax dollars on this politically motivated lawsuit against the federal government, that would be a good first step. The second one is electrifying our transportation system, and in particular, looking at all-day two-way electrified go to our region and incentives for electric vehicles. Uh, next is reverse their cuts to conservation programs so businesses and homeowners and renters can save money by saving energy and reducing the amount of pollution from our buildings. And then the third one is support that transformation to a clean economy by supporting clean tech businesses. 
You mentioned that price on carbon we talk about so much when we're talking about climate plans in this country now, Mike. So is that to say that a carbon tax is the way to go for Ontario, in your opinion? Well, it's not the only tool, but it's certainly an important tool. And, you know, every economist you talk to, including Nobel Prize winning economists, tell you that that is the cheapest and most efficient way uh, to address the climate crisis. Uh, it's not going to be the only tool. As I said, we're going to have to look at electrifying our transportation system, making our buildings more efficient, um, incentivizing businesses to reduce their, their carbon footprint and invest in clean tech. But the foundation of all of that, it's just like you have to have a solid foundation for your home, and then you build that home, the foundation of all of that is to put a price on pollution. You mentioned the Environment Minister's response to the report yesterday. You described it as rather sheepish, and I don't think that's off the mark when he basically talked about this climate plan being a living document and now moving forward with some consultations. Are you confident, Mike, because you work with these people far more closely, we're just kind of watching from afar. Are you confident that this government is willing to modify the climate plan it put forward to actually meet the climate targets set forward in Paris? Let's hope so, and I'm definitely going to be trying to work across party lines to make that happen. But there was another aspect to the Auditor General's report yesterday that leaves me deeply troubled, and she was saying that the government over its first year and a half uh, in office has completely undermined the very mechanism government uses to consult the public on environmental policies, the Environmental Bill of Rights, uh, by uh, shortening the consultation periods, and then over 50% of the postings on the EBR don't even have enough information for people to be able to adequately comment on them. So if we are going to go into this consultation phase on what is the next step, the government's going to have to reverse course on the ways in which it's undermined consultations uh, in its first year and a half. What is it, Mike, that makes you so passionate about seeing this province, this country, meet its commitments under the Paris Accord? Well, I mean, first of all, I have two daughters, and I want them to have a livable planet. And I think we have a moral obligation uh, to our children and to future generations to make sure we leave a livable planet for them. And then also, as a small business owner and an entrepreneur, I see a huge economic opportunity for us to embrace a clean and caring economy to create jobs and prosperity while at the same time addressing the climate crisis. And so, you know, let's not look at this just as, you know, a challenge we have to grudgingly uh, address. Let's look at it as an opportunity to create a better economy. I know we pulled you out a question period to do this interview. We appreciate you doing that, and thanks for joining us. Oh, anytime, Mike. Happy to do it. Mike Schreiner is the head of the Ontario Green Party and the MPP for Guelph. Your Region This Week continues after this. Welcome back. 519 Sports Online covers the Toyota Hockey Challenges Championship game featuring the Kitchener Junior Rangers versus the Waterloo Wolves. Let's see who came out on top. The Waterloo Wolves and the Kitchener Junior Rangers minor bantams squaring off at the auditorium on Saturday night. On the line, a trip to Japan for a hockey and cultural exchange over the March break. The Wolves and Rangers have met twice during the Alliance regular season and they split those two games. And this Toyota Cup final turned into a thriller opening period. The first good scoring chance goes to Kitchener. Jackson Broda dancing in over to Joseph Bremer. Evan Baker with the stop, and he hangs on for the whistle. No score after one. Second period now, it's a give and go from the Wolves. Keaton Bartlett dishes off, goes to the net. Trenton Bennett with a glove save. Nice setup by Waterloo. 
Good stop by Bennett. We are still scoreless. Back the other way, it's a 2 on 0 for Kitchener. Aiden Burns to Landon McDougal. Pad save Evan Baker. Outstanding from the Wolves netminder. Then it's Joseph Bremer with a break. Keaton Bartlett hustles back and takes away a scoring chance. He knocks it away. Good play there by Bartlett. A few minutes later, this is Devin Nunez on the rush. He lets it go and scores. Big goal Nunez. He gets Kitchener on the board late in the second period. 1-0 Rangers after two. Third period Wolves power play. Stuart St. Clair comes out from behind the net, but he can't beat Trenton Bennett. The Rangers would kill off the penalty. Later, Waterloo with a two-on-one, but how about Marcus Patak? Stick in the lane and he knocks it away. Kitchener still leading 1-0. Dying minutes of regulation. Colton Henderson chips it ahead. Watch for the trailer. That's Braden Stump and he ties the game. The Wolves pull even with 4.45 left on the clock. We are tied at one. Final minute now. Isaac Lawrence, the Wolves captain in the middle, denied by Trenton Bennett. Still one all and eventually we need double overtime to decide a winner. The puck comes back to the near point. Kadenberger fires. The rebound is there. Thomas Chan, double OT winner. And the Wolves celebrate. They rush off the bench. Chan is the hero for Waterloo. He punches a plane ticket to Japan. Waterloo with a dramatic victory. Team captain Isaac Lawrence with the Toyota Cup championship trophy and you couldn't ask for a better game a hard-fought battle between two rivals and it's the Wolves prevailing 2-1 is the final here is a very excited Thomas Chan talking about the biggest goal of his young career there's a lot going in my head right now there's so much that oh I did it for the boys they all had my back everybody had each other's back for that matter it was what an experience. It's going to be it's going to be great. I well, everybody's pumped. It's going to be it's oh there's so much. Let's go boys. Let's go. Boys. Let's go. It was a great experience. Like our team played, we had a rough start and then we battled back and what an experience it was. I have like no words to explain it. I was saying, "Woo, let's go boys." Yeah, it's like excited, happy, you know. All the emotions are high. The City of Waterloo's snow removal program for seniors is running once again this year. We spoke with the City about the program and other support programs for seniors in the City. So the snow removal program is part of our home maintenance program um, and that's where we match uh, snow shovelers with City of Waterloo residents for the snow season. So it's a brokered service. Um, so Home Support does the screening of the workers on behalf of the clients and then they're matched with that worker uh, for the whole season. Uh, the program was started actually in about 1985, so <laughs> almost 35 years now, um, and was started just uh, to help keep people living independently at home. It's um, a big response every year, um, so we've had about in total 84 requests. We're able to match about 70 people, um, so some people found other arrangements in the meantime, um, but we usually fill up around November, the beginning of November. Broader in the home maintenance program is also uh, grass cutting, leaf raking, uh, gardening. We're always looking for gardeners, so you know anyone who's looking to pull some weeds or even do anything more involved than that could uh, contact us in about March to get that process started. Um, so for the snow program, we are full for this season, so we have completed both uh, recruitment and the program is at capacity. Um, but anyone who's looking to become a homemaker could just email myself, carolyn.wilkie at waterloo.ca, um, and then we can go from there. Um, and if anyone has any questions, they can always just give me a call. 519-579-6930. Your Region This Week will return right after these messages. Welcome back. 
Sean Fafaro has the highlights of the Guelph Storm and the Kitchener Rangers over the past week. Kitchener Rangers with two games on the weekend. They would start on Friday night at home against the Owen Sound Attack in the first period. On the power play, it's Liam Howell getting the Rangers on the board. They're up 1-0. In the second period, it's Isaac Langdon with his second of the year on that spin and fall. A good-looking goal for Isaac Langdon. We head off to the third period. This was all Kitchener. Icing on the cake is Riley Damian. He's empty net goal. That makes it a 3-0 final for the Rangers. They would be at home on Sunday afternoon against the Guelph Storm. The third time these teams have met this season. Look at this individual effort from Reed Vlad opening the scoring in the first. No more scoring until the final minute. This is a six on four for the Storm, but Michael Vukojevic with a 200 foot goal into the empty net. The Guelph Storm would put one in with five seconds remaining, but too little, too late as the Kitchener Rangers come on top of this one, two to one. The Guelph Storm would have three games over the course of the weekend on Friday night. It was Saginaw. Guelph would open the scoring in this one. Pavel Gogolev's 14th of the year puts the Storm up. Cole Perfetti would tie it with his 13th of the year. Into the second period, it's Jacob Roach putting the Storm on top again. And Danny Zilkin shortly after that. Here we will see it. Danny Zilkin with his third of the year. The Storm up three to one. Saginaw would answer back here. Ethan Cardwell's eighth of the season goes past Nico Dawes. Three to two, the Storm on top. Late in the second period, it's Matthew Pappas putting the Storm up two goals again, four to two. We would head to the third period. Could Saginaw make a comeback? It's gonna be tough with Guelph scoring the way they do. Jacob Roach scores his second of the game in fifth of the year, and Andre Bakanov would seal the deal on the power play late in the third. Six to two is the final Jacob Roach with two goals. You've already seen the highlights for Kitchener and Guelph. They would head off to Saginaw again on Wednesday, and this one would be opened, the scoring by Saginaw. Dalton Duhart's third of the year puts the spirit up one nothing. The Storm would answer back later in the first. Matthew Pappas scored in the last game, scores in this game 1-1 midway through the first period. Later in the first, it's Mason Millman, sixth of the year, puts Saginaw on top. No scoring in the second, halfway through the, the third. Cooper Walker with his first goal of the year, ties it up 2-2. Overtime would solve nothing. Three shooters would solve nothing, and Pavel Gogolev would be the only goal scorer for the Storm as he scores the shootout winner. The upcoming games for these two teams. The Rangers are at home Friday night against the Oshawa Generals. They are on the road in Owen Sound on Saturday. And then on Tuesday, the 10th, it's the London Knights in town for the annual Teddy Bear Toss game. For the Storm, three games in that span as well. Friday night, they have the Barry Colts at home. On Sunday, they've got the London Knights. And then on Tuesday, they are in Owen Sound at seven o'clock. That's it for another episode of Your Region This Week. For more information on the show, or if you have a story idea, visit our website, rogerstv.com, and fill out our proposal form at the bottom. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.